Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting of the Plan Approval Authority to order. It is Thursday, February 25th, 2021, uh, shortly after 6.30. This is a remote meeting in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, relating to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency. February 25th, 2021, public meeting of the Plan Approval Authority shall be physically closed to the public to avoid group congregation. However, to view this meeting in progress, please go to facebook.com backslash LakeCam. You do not need a Facebook account to view the meeting. This meeting will be recorded and available to be viewed at a later date at www.lakecam.tv backslash. Uh, the first item on our agenda tonight, well, actually, before we do that, I'd like to just, uh, I'll note myself a roll call of attendance. Uh, I have members present, Barbara Mankowski is present, uh, Peter Conroy is present, Michelle McEachran is present, and Jack Lynch is present, and myself, Chairman Knox, are present for our recording minutes. Uh, tonight, we have for... Uh, Guests, we have Mr. Robert Pellucci from the residence at Namaskat River and his attorney, Michael Shaughnessy, and also Amy Quessel from town council present and Kathy Murray, the clerk for the PAA. Uh, so at this time, first item on our agenda is the request for approval of a minor change for lot D at the residences at Namaskat River, uh, located at Riverside Drive and Commercial Drive. Um, so I guess in short, there's been some back and forth about a previous decision that the planning board made on this, uh, minor change, which I guess really probably shouldn't have been deemed a minor change because the affordable component was lost, I believe through the transfer from ownership to rental units. Uh, so I'd just like to make a clarification. We have in our packet tonight, a decision that's been drafted by attorney O'Shaughnessy um, that date probably needs to be amended because that was initially made out for February 11th. Uh, Amy Quessel, have you had a chance to review this decision? I have, I have, thank and you. Is, does it satisfy the needs of requested by the board of selectmen um yeah I, I i think it's a it if anything it goes a bit in you know it's a bit too detailed but i'm fine with it i'm fine with that okay um attorney o'shaughnessy would you like to add anything to this before i read into the decision and no i mean uh again uh just just to remind the board we were before you last summer, we were trying to change this to a rental project. Um, we had uh, the board approved it for, for uh, the rental project for lot D. Um, we, uh, we were working with DHCD. They gave us conditional uh, approval um, subject to the town entering into a newer amended uh, affordable uh, housing restriction agreement. Uh, we were before the selectmen in November, December. Um, they, they voted not to enter into a new agreement or amended agreement, and that's the, um, the motivation behind this request to change. Okay. Mark, can I say something? Go right ahead, Mr. Pucci. Yeah, I'd just like to clarify, because I've been hearing some stuff about this also, and you just said it, that um, what I tried to do was going to lose the towns affordable for that part, and that's not true. We were actually going to get more units if that change was made. I wasn't trying to make any change that took away an affordable unit from the town. I was trying to add units to the affordable count for the town. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I, I, I do think there's been uh, different information floated around. Uh, so if you're satisfied with what's in front of us tonight, we're, we're satisfied with uh, taking a vote on it. No, so, uh, um, so, so, Mr. Chairman, the um, the the issue as to why it's it's back um, in front of the PAA is because um, there was a the um, the P 
PAA modification decision is not going to match up to the um, Board of Selectmen decision slash um, regulatory agreement. So um, really we're, we're just asking that condition two, which states that you know the applicant shall obtain the approval of DHCD regarding the renting of affordable units located on lot D. Um, the Board of Selectmen are not gonna allow rental on lot D. So, um, you know, that, that has to change it, it is really why we're here. Okay, and again, so I don't make a, a mistake. I had two of these in my packet and they both look identical. Is that, Kathy, are they both identical? I just printed out what was attached to the email, so. Okay. Mark, can I ask a question of Amy, just as a point of clarification? Go ahead. Um, Amy, my question is this, when we originally approved this, um, we were within planning board, in, in my impression and understanding and review, did not make an error. Um, the or, or a mistake or an oversight, there was an issue moreover with the compatibility with the Board of Selectmen's decision. If I understand that correctly, is that what you're saying? Was there- I mean, that, that is the result. Um, now, the fact that um, the change of use from, um, a for, from for sale to rental um, I, I think technically the way that I read the bylaw, that should have been a major amendment, not a minor amendment, but, um, but it was done and it was not appealed. So um, you guys amended the, amended the original decision to allow lot D to be rental um, and you are correct. So the next thing that has to happen is that DHCD has to issue some kind of approval, but then the Board of Selectmen have to um, agree to amend the regulatory agreement, which says for sale units, and they had they had to agree to amend it to say um, rental units, and they did not want to do that. So we're back to for sale units. Okay, I, I asked that for um, an understanding. We're a fairly young board, new board, yeah. and we want to have an understanding because um, you know. Uh, as a volunteer, you know, uh, if, if I need to be criticized, I'll own it. But if, if we didn't do anything that was, you know, um, incorrect, then I, I want to understand that too. So, um, you know, when we, I remember the vote, I remember why we did it. I was also in opposition to uh, moving this to being a rental unit instead of being owned. But I understood the reasons why we were doing it. Um, and I felt that it was the right decision at the time. So, um, if we made a mistake. I just want to really have a clarification on that so that that doesn't happen again. And um, it, it, my understanding is the opinion supported that. So, you know, I guess for us, it's a learning opportunity, but I'm not sure exactly what, what our takeaway here is on what we should have done differently. And I wanted him to know if you could tell us what we should have done differently as a board. Major change. Oh. I'm sorry, what was that? Major change instead of minor change. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only thing that, that you honestly, the only thing that you could have done differently is to, um, I would say, maybe to just to reach out to town council's office, because um, the this is a new um, sub layer of the 40R. Um, you guys are not you guys are serving as a planning board. You're also serving as, you know, the, the plan, you know, the PAA. So you, you've got a lot. You've got a lot of balls mm -hmm. in the air. So. Um, you know, I think on this, because this is such a new thing, but, um, you know, I, I would agree that, um, I would agree that with Mr. Pellucci, that if we had to, if this were a rental, um, I, I, I don't agree that, that the way that it, the way that it was done would create the fact that all of the units on that, on lot D would be counted on the SHI. Um, I think we would have to, we would have to still do a modification to the decision to get all of the units on the SHI. But, um, but if, if lot D is rental and if it's a sep if it's separate, then it would be, we would count those on the SHI. So, so there is, you know, there is a reason why you guys, you know, probably agreed to put this at rental. However, um, that's not, 
that that can't happen because the select the board of selectmen are not going to allow that to happen. So we need to um, delete the condition and get a new decision. And then we can get the, um, the board of selectmen can then sign the regulatory agreement. DHCD can bless everything and that's it. Okay, so my takeaway is that next time we have something of this nature that comes in front of us, um, that council should be reviewing it before we vote. Absolutely. Okay, that's what, that was my, I wanna have a learning opportunity for all of us, so thank you. And I'm not trying to make more work for myself. It's just, be, this is all new. So I, I really, it's I think that- complicated. And yeah, it is, all it of is, us I all agree. Here, so we're, we're putting in a lot of time and we're do, absolutely doing the best we can. And no, I agree. Uh, some of the comments that were made were made me very uncomfortable. So I just wanna say that and leave it there. Thank you. Should I read this entire document? Um, no, I think that um, I think that the um, I think that you have to what what you are going to do is you are going to amend your July 2020 decision to um, rescind your approval to yep. allow the affordable units on lot D be rented um, rather than um, for sale units. Right. So I, I don't need to read any of the findings of facts or any of the basic the, defined terms. They're the same as the the they're the same as the July 2020 decision. Okay, so so we're just gonna make a quick motion to waive the reading of the document. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Barbara, Aye. Peter, Jack, Aye. Michelle, myself. Um, and then so so that that would be um, that would be the first change would be to rescind the vote um, allowing. Um, units on lot D to be um, rented rather than a rather than for sale units, and then um, the second part of that is to remove condition condition two in the July twenty um, twenty second twenty twenty decision. And that's and that's the really way, the that's really what, the confusing part is condition two. The way that that's drafted, uh, Mr. O'Shaughnessy has that in one fell swoop. Can I read that as? A solitary motion. I think so. Uh, it's okay. up to Mr. Mr. O'Shaughnessy uh, agrees. Very good. So, planning board members Mark Knox, Barbara Mankowski, Peter Conroy, Michelle McEachran, and Jack Lynch will vote to rescind the July eleventh, twenty twenty vote to allow the affordable units on Lot D to become rent uh, rented to income eligible persons and delete condition two in the amendment. Uh, so I'm gonna make, that's a motion to take a vote on that. Can I get a second? Second. Motion and a second. Um, and roll call vote by name. Mark Knox votes aye. Barbara Mankowski? Aye. Peter Conroy? Aye. Michelle McEachran? Aye. And Jack Lynch? Aye. Motion carries <laughs> unanimously. And secondly, I'll make a motion that Mark Knox is authorized as chairman to, you, are you looking for me to sign this individually, right, Mike? On behalf of planning board? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's just for, for convenience sake, instead of having everyone to try to grab five signatures. So a motion for the planning board to authorize Mark Knox chairman to execute this minor change of 40 hour plan approval on behalf of the planning board as the plan approval authority. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, I'm gonna read in order. Mark Knox, aye. Barbara Mankowski. Aye. Peter Conroy. Aye. Michelle McEachran. Aye. Jack Lynch. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, so I will sign this document. It will be filed at the town clerk's office at the end of the appeal period. It'll be done. Yeah, I'll get it recorded. That's fine. Okay. Um, so I think that concludes that bit of business. Uh, and the only other thing we have on the plan of approval authority agenda is to approve the minutes of the August 13th, 2020 remote meeting. Uh, has everybody had a chance to briefly look over these? I think they're fairly simple. 
I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as drafted. I'll second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Uh, Jack, I'm not gonna call on you because it looks like you weren't present. This was when we were in transition, when you were soon to become on the board. Right. Uh, so, Barbara? Aye. Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Myself, vote aye. So motion carries with the majority. Um, so it, um, if I may, Mr. Chairman, um, I just wanted to address um, Ms. Mankowski's comments. Um, one of the other things that you also need to realize is that right now um, the town does not have a town administrator. So, you know, it's hard to, to it's hard to, there, there's no um, conduit, you know, between town council and your board. Um, you know, obviously the board of selectmen are in contact with us all the time, but, but, you know, I, I, it, it's, th these are, un these are just, th this isn't how it always is. Um, so when there's, you know, when you have a town administrator in, you know, in that position, you can say, I think we need to have town council look at this and, you know, they can make a decision whether, you know, whether legal services can be used or not. So, you know, here you guys, it was, everything was different. So I, I really wouldn't, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so at, at this time, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn TAA hearing or meeting. Second. Barbara seconded for the record. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Yeah. Uh, roll call. Barbara? Aye. Peter? Aye. Uh, Michelle? Aye. Jack? Aye. Myself. Vote aye. Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned. And we have a few minutes before the regular planning board meeting. Thanks, guys. Uh, Appreciate it. All right. At this time, I'd like to call this meeting of the Lakeville Planning Board to order. It's Thursday, February 25th, 2021 at 7 p.m. This is a remote meeting. And in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, relating to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency, February 25th, 2021, public meeting of the planning board shall be physically closed to the public to avoid group congregation. However, to view this meeting in progress, please go to facebook.com backslash Lake Cam. You do not need a Facebook account to view the meeting. This meeting will be recorded and available to be viewed at a later date at www.lakecam.tv backslash. Uh, the first item on our agenda is a conceptual uh, concept presentation of 58 Main Street. We are gonna meet with Daniel Cooney regarding his proposed project. So at this time, Mr. Cooney, if you'd like to present. Oh, well, okay, my wife, Christine is also here. And I did uh, submit a general written summary because I've never done this before and, um, and Kathy asked for it. So I don't know if you all received that or not. No? We did. You did, okay. So I could summarize that in, in, in words if you would like me to, but essentially it, it's an idea that um, we couldn't help think about. This empty lot has been there. We knew the Simmons when they lived there. Um, our business is growing. Uh, we love Lakeville. Uh, we live here. We've lived here for 20 years. Uh, you know, we saw what happened to the dollar store. Um, we know Bruce Bernoit, the old current owner now. And I reached out to Bruce and I said, can you build something for us? I know you're in that business. We'll, we'll lease from you. And he said he didn't want to do that. And he all of a sudden said, but if you want to buy it, think about it. So all of a sudden, a month ago, we're in this situation where we're considering well, what should we do? Um, so we're exploring the possibilities, essentially. We, we're not builders. Um, we, we, we run an import business. We import wine and spirits. Um, uh, but we couldn't help look at this possibility. If it's a possible, it's feasible or not. The, the big question was, uh, and I reached out to Nate. I think I reached out to, to Barbara a bit. And uh, just to try to get a feel for what is this? Is it something that we should do, could do? Um, 
So we're looking at all of our options. Um, Bruce has, has, you know, showed willingness to work with us if it is an option. Um, so again, it's, it's, it's the early stages and we're just looking for information. I think one of the primary questions I, I posed on, on the summary that I, I handed off to you guys, um, I, is it even possible for you to, uh, to, to change a bylaw to, to limit the size of a building uh, on a particular lot, especially if it is something that makes sense, if it's a small industrial. So Mr. Mr. Cooney, could I cut you off there and just sure. step in? Sure. Um, so yeah, my understanding is right now, your business as designed would not uh, be allowed by right at that location. Right. And currently there is no mechanism for a special permit to place, it's basically, it would be an industrial use in a business location. Um, and I actually, I had a business that was an industrial use in a business location, but it was specifically light manufacturing. And there is actually a provision in uh, Mass General Law that allows manufacturing of a small, you know, small scale manufacturing that's certain percentage has to be sold to the public. So I actually, I asked uh, Mr. Darling about that, if that could in any way apply to your business. And he said, no, just because it's solely distribution, the only uh, loophole is light manufacturing. Uh, so to answer your other question, um, and I, I just, I'm sorry, I, I wanted to go into that. So if people are watching, they kind of understand better of what we're talking about. Sure. Um, if you wanted to try and change a bylaw and work uh, with communication, communicating with the planning board, it probably would be wise at least to gain our support if you understood maybe what we were going to back or not want, want to back. Um, I don't think that your idea is a bad idea. Uh, and I do think that there would have to be some sort of limitations because absolutely if, if you're just going to say, well, we can put industrial in business zone, what's the sense in having different zones? I agree. It's just a free for all. So if you wanted to try and um, amend the bylaw or to make a provision that would fit a, a small business, small scale distribution of under a certain square footage, and make that by special permit or some, for some mechanism, I think that the planning board might back that uh, to, to promote small business growth, but we would, not, we would not want to back something that would potentially open up large scale industrial businesses in an otherwise not allowed zone. I agree with you. And that's what, it, it seems to make sense to me to have uh, limitations but there is no uh, specification, no clarity of limitations. Basically, you could have a tiny little business that that happens to import stuff and 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 have almost no impact on on your community, and then and yet it's it's limited just because of the word, the definition, the broad definition of what warehouse office means. So I mean, that's all we're 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 just exploring that, and it seems I don't even know if it's a possibility. That's why we're here. That's we just we want to know what you think. Even if it's not for me, if it's for future people, future yep. businesses, it seems like it's something should be explored. Barbara, would you like to add some to that? Yeah, I have a question for Dan. Um, sure. My understanding was that your intention for this property was to have some small retail, some office space and remaining storage. Um, would, would that be the case? Or are you talking about distribution and that you'd have trucks coming and going? We, yes, there would be some distribution uh, because we import, we, we, for the last, well, we've been in business now 12 years and we average, last year we averaged one container delivering to our current warehouse, which is oh, in Wareham, nice. per month, one container per month. And then how many pickups from a big truck? Five per week. Five per week. It's the expert right here. <laughs> Five okay. per week. So that's not a lot. I mean, that's less than the dollar store. That's like, I think the dollar store might be doing five a day. I don't know. But I mean, it just seems 
it seems like arbitrary, the ruling where you call something, essentially the dollar store is going to be bigger than what we're proposing. It, it, it ha it's essentially a warehouse, but they have that you can come in and shop there and they have more traffic, uh, both in trucks and in, in, um, in retail traffic. So the impact is far greater than what we would be proposing if it was an option. That's, a, that's all. Um, my second question has to do with um, changing the bylaws. So that always seems to me like to be a fairly uh, big task because you have to go to town meeting, right, Mark? Yep. We, have to, we have to go to town meeting. And uh, so the, the next opportunity to make a bylaw change would be at the earliest in the fall, I would imagine. Um, and that's if there was a special town meeting in the fall. Otherwise, it would be next spring because I don't see it happening fast enough to get on to. And I don't I don't. I just don't see it moving quickly enough to get on for this coming meeting. Mark, would it's you- It's not possible. You'd need the bylaw drafted, a, a lawyer to approve its wording and to post a public hearing. And I think that takes about three weeks to post a public hearing. And they're trying to get the warrant closed by I think March 8th. Uh, so there, technically there wouldn't be enough time to get it on the spring meeting like Barbara mentioned. Uh, but I'm gonna guess with all of your efforts, and if you came back to us maybe once or twice, or you circulated information to say, here's my first draft, would you give a suggestion or give some guidance based on X or Y? And make, you know, obviously, like we said, creating some limitations for the size and scale of business so we're not promoting a potential bylaw to make unsavory businesses go into a, or unsavory industrial businesses to go into otherwise business or residential areas. Mm -hmm. So like I say, I, I would recommend the approval by special permit and the, the limited size square footage of the business. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else, would you rec anyone else recommend ways to limit a business? So you're almost basically Hours taking that- operation? Well, that's just, that would be a condition of the special permit not necessarily uh, a limit. I mean, you could limit it to not 24 hour clear to make that part of the requirements of the special permit. And we're Michelle? totally fine with that. In fact, because, I mean, we live across the street, we, we would enforce, we would want that enforced. Then we would, if given the opportunity, we would, we think any business in a, in a, yeah, and a residential just, neighborhood should be limited. Understood. But just so you understand, Mr. Cooney, we're not, I'm not necessarily offering to write a bylaw for you. I understand. As much as we want you to do 90% of the work and we would, you know, help to give you some guidance and craft it, you know, maybe with our experience in land use to make sure that it would protect the town. Uh, and in you doing that and getting the planning board support, we would then be able to possibly support it at town meeting on your behalf. Not necessarily for you as an individual, but what you're trying to create for a small business opportunity in town. Right. Michelle, would you like to add something to that? I say hand up. Yeah, I was just going to say, and I'm not sure of the legality of this, but um, I would love to see something that would allow for this to be done by a Lakeville resident, because I think supporting local business, you know, someone who's already in town, to me would be, um, you know, more appealing than just anybody coming into town with a distribution use. Um, You're saying you know. to make the criteria of the special permit that it has to be a, a resident? Yeah, I don't know if that's- Or at least a current business operating in town or something like that. Yeah. So that's one to think about too, Mr. Cooney. Okay. We certainly would wanna support the local people first and not have- Appreciate that. I guess that should it should count for something. I guess if somebody's already living here and been doing business here and contributing to the town, I suppose it should count for something. But I don't know. On the other hand, small businesses of any type, if they conform to the to the uh, the, the law, um, I think would be more favorable than some big huge business that that doesn't. But anyway, yeah. I, I agree with that, Dan. And I guess my other question for Mark is: um, Is there any benefit to this applicant? Um, having a similar conversation with ZBA or is it strictly a bylaw issue at this point? Um, I don't know that 
they would gain much. And I'm not saying that ZBA wouldn't be helpful. It's just all uh, bylaws get posted through a, a public hearing through the planning board. Mm -hmm. And they would be recommended or not recommended by the planning board at mm -hmm. town meeting, not ZBA. So I think if, if you're going to go the amended bylaw road, you definitely want to have planning board support. And he doesn't have a, a he doesn't have the mechanism to get um, a variance that wouldn't go through ZBA in this case because it's commercial. Well, it depends how we write the, the special permit gets right written, and who is the special permit granting authority in this case. Okay, if there was no amendment to the bylaw, I know I know, I'm a little there bit is more. No, there is no mechanism now. The, That's you what can't I thought. Get a, there is, he can't get a special permit for what he wants to do because there isn't an avenue. Okay, so thank you. By changing the bylaw to create the avenue, mm -hmm. would also create a special permit granting authority to do that, whether yep. it be planning board or ZBA. Okay. So a variance wouldn't even work? No. Okay. Okay. In, you, in your opinion, and, and I respect your opinion. No, it, it, it wouldn't, and I'm going off uh, from what I was told by the zoning enforcement official, and I trust his yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So the the earliest, if we were to do all the work and apply for this and that and do everything, it still would take you like uh, you estimate it wouldn't go to town meeting until fall at the earliest, possibly next spring, if we did all the work to, yeah. to get it as a bylaw a variation or a bylaw bylaw change change. change yeah. mm -hmm. Is that what would it be? Amendment. I guess it's, it would be a change where you'd actually be writing a bylaw because uh, there's nothing in place to do this right now. Yeah. You'd be creating a bylaw. But is this, as we are just bouncing this off you, but from the feeling, yeah, I mean, it does make sense, doesn't it? I mean, if, would, would, does, wouldn't it be preferable? And again, I know you're not voting on it, but I guess I'm just trying to get a feel for the, because as I thought of it, it seems to make sense. It, it, it seems like we're stuck on a definition of, of what office warehouse is. And if, uh, if a small business who has very low impact in, in, and they happen to want to locate in a business zone, does so, it make sense? Am I, am I wrong for thinking about it? Well, to, to, to further your point and use an example that's in place, you're allowed to have an in-home business as long as it doesn't have more than a certain number of employees. Oh. That's just, that's fact. That's how it is to have an in-home business. It's again, business, not in-home industrial. So, you know, you could operate out of your garage if you were a, a contractor and you maybe did some woodworking in your garage or you were an auto mechanic and you did some repairs after work as long as you didn't have more than like three employees. Oh. And I'm just using that as an example to say, we like your idea. If as long as you limit it, um, maybe I'm the number of employees is how That's you also limit it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I agree with limits. I a hundred percent agree with limits, mm -hmm. but I keep hearing in all the, all the master plans and everything that this town wants to attract small businesses. And I just can't help see the irony in that they're, Looks like somebody's pushing to have a huge, you know, 130 bay distributor right across the street from where we're talking about having such a low impact and I think an improvement to the neighborhood. And that's even a question, but I understand, you know, laws are set up, you have to evolve with change, but it just does seem ironic to me that that, that that's going literally across the street or may go across the street. I know you guys are grappling with that now. And, I, it's just, it, it's, I guess that's why you're there. And again, I appreciate all of your volunteer work to, 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 to stand up for the town and do what's right. And I, and I appreciate that. It's not yeah. easy, I guess. I, I'm just trying to, we're trying to understand it ourselves, but it just, it seems like something that maybe eventually should happen one way or the other, that, that there should be an allowance for small businesses to want to locate here, especially if they have low impact. That, that's all. That's my point. Yeah. So one other recommendation before we move on. Um, and we and other boards, I think, often do it, is go on other towns, zoning bylaws and websites and see if they have similar things uh, that I hate to use the term to plagiarize, but to, to adopt a portion of 
that sure. if some another community has a similar thing that you're trying to do, it's, yeah, that's an excellent. That's idea. a lot of work out. No, that's an excellent idea. Yeah, no, I think you're right. And uh, okay, thank you so much, you guys. Appreciate. You're it. welcome. Have a great night. Are right, you too? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I'd like to actually jump ahead in our agenda. Um, we had a late edition of meet with um, Mr. Morrissey regarding drainage on 39 Cross Street. He is a resident at 37 Cross Street. And I see that he is here tonight. So uh, Mr. Morrissey, would you like to talk to us now? Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> uh, Mike, I don't know what you've shared with the folks here, um, but I am at 37 Cross Street and they're currently in the process of clearing out 39 Cross Street. And at the halfway back on my property, the grade is in favor of uh, that crew and the water is draining from that lot <clears throat> into my backyard. It's created a pool um, six inches deep, probably 40 by 40 in one area, probably 10 inches deep as you get into the woods. Um, I've got several concerns with it. Um, sent some photos into you, Kathy. Um, Mike, I don't know if you have them to share with them. Um, I believe they all saw those. Did the entire board get the correspondence? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Mr. Morrissey, I was contacted back by uh, the engineer there, uh, Zenith Consulting Engineers, today. Um, yeah. And he explained and he actually sent me some photos that I also circulated with the board members uh, sort of at the 11th hour right before the meeting uh, that they had started to build a drainage swale. Um, so I don't know if you noticed that today. Um, no, I didn't. Um, I wasn't actually working from my house today. Um, okay. Unfortunately, so <clears throat> it brings up a new concern, though. Um, in the previous meetings, I asked um, Jamie at Zenith because I had concerns about my leaching field. And I recall him saying that the roadway would be 10 feet from my property, essentially. Uh, it doesn't look like it's 10 feet from my property line as you approach this area. And my concern is, um, you know, winter storms in the future, um, they're going to have to plow snow somewhere. That's it appears it's going to land on my property, um, which means they're going to probably salt the road, which is going to continue to roll. Have you had your property line surveyed um, recently no, to I'm, actually have a bound put in? I'm going off the boundary that, uh, uh, what's the name of the company? Uh, whoever Zenith used to do it. I have uh, one scheduled. Um, okay. But he's a few weeks out. So I don't want to get into a huge discussion about a property line until we know the facts of the location of it. Because I, I know it's... Well, the so, water's on my property. Yeah. Yep, I, I, mean, I understand that. that. But we, you, we just Let's went into a, a discussion about the property line. And I don't want to get into a property line discussion if I we didn't don't bring... know exactly where it is. That's all. Okay. I, right. I, I saw the pictures of the water on your property. I okay. did get some pictures this afternoon from the engineer that I guess Redlund had started to uh, construct the swale that they should have done before the road was elevated the way that it is. Uh, the engineer had apologized for that and said that he had sort of, uh, I think he said reprimanded uh, the, the guys working there because they clearly did create a problem. Um, so, you know, I, I don't want to get into a big, long thing with you tonight until you get a chance to look at that. And I just want you to know, communicate with us next week. You can call me, you can email or call Kathy again. I'd like you to get back to us and see how what they did worked. And from the pictures, and I'd like to get out to the site as well. Mm -hmm. It appears that I almost feel like the silt fence that's in place right now to keep the stuff from flowing onto your property is also stopping the water from flowing off your property. It's coming right through the silt fence. You can see it if you look close enough in the picture. It's created a, basically a 
stream, a flow, a sediment. It's separated, and you can actually see what would be a river if it kept going. Okay. So that said, I did see pictures of a swale built as of 4 o'clock today, and they told me that it was draining. So I'm sure there's still some water in your yard. I'm sure it didn't work instantaneously, but we'd like you to update us on this as they progress to make sure that the problem is resolved. Okay. <clears throat> well, in the meantime, I still got a pond in my backyard and, um, you know, if we get any more rain or any more snow, I'm going to have more until it, uh, resolves. I just, I need something in writing from the engineer that says what they're going to do and when they intend to fix it. Um, but it sounds like all, today they started and you said you didn't see it. Well, I just told you I wasn't home. Um, it's dark outside right now. Um, I will go out tomorrow morning and look. Um, okay. Please, but, please update us. If it looks any better, we'd love to hear it. And if it doesn't, I'll follow up with it. Okay. And Dave, I just want to add to that. I think I'm like, okay, I'm not muted. Um, when we approved this plan, and I know you were participating with, with those meetings and so forth, where your property, uh, uh, you know, uh, about this lot, you know that we spent a lot of time on drainage. Um, that was... I, I, I want to, I feel like it was at least a third to a half of all the discussions about this had to do with drainage because we've seen what's happened, you know, with the other development of the street and we know how wet some of that area can get. Um, but I do think, in, you know, we, so we want to hear from you and we want to know that this is being resolved. Um, we don't want to just let it pass and, and be concerned that there is a, an ongoing issue. So, um, you know, if we need to have the engineer back in, we will certainly, I mean, Mark, would you agree? I think that's reasonable. If we have to have someone come and speak to it, we, we can do that. Yeah, Jamie will come back in. Yeah. Uh, so, Dave, please give us an update. Uh, email Kathy or however you've been communicating with the town. I see them all. And I will reach back out to the engineer in quick order. Uh, and if we need to have you back at our next regular meeting and have them here as well, we will. Okay, that'd be fine. I appreciate it. All right, you're welcome and uh, good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Um, let's see. Floodplain bylaw update. Uh, Who said something? I did. She's, she said she was going to send us the updated re list tomorrow morning. No. Okay. Uh, Amy Quessel said she was going to send Nate completed bylaws that other towns she's done for okay. so that he can use it to, to cross-reference with the existing floodplain stuff that he's trying to filter through in our existing floodplain. So he just wanted a template from one that was already approved. Um, I don't know. Did I delve into that at the last meeting at all as far as what I did? Well, like basically, I filled it out. Yeah, you filled out the form. Yeah, yeah. You guys knew that, right? I, we talked yeah. about that, right? Yeah. Uh, I made the the name of the person to administer it, the floodplain administrator, so that it could be maybe, maybe passed off to somebody else. Uh, so, yeah. all right. So, you guys are aware of that. Amy Quessel owes Nate something regarding templates from other towns that she's done. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that gets squared away. Uh, Kathy, my understanding was that between Nate and Amy Quessel and you, we were going to try and reverse engineer the timing to make sure we could still have a public hearing once that was. So as far as the Board of Selectmen knows, that's going on the warrant. Right. And we may just not have the public hearing before the March, March 8th deadline, but it's going right. to happen. So I think that's the best update we can give at this point. And hopefully we see action next week if we get to help out uh, with going through the existing floodplain bylaw stuff. Any questions? Um, I, just, I guess I just want to make, add to that. This is, I, I'm putting this up there as our number one priority. We got, this has to happen and it, it, no matter what, it has to happen. Otherwise we're gonna have major consequences from it, so. Um, so the next item on the agenda 
we have the site plan review changes that uh, I drafted. I haven't got an affirmative response back from Nate, but would anybody like to change what we have at this point? I think everybody has a piece of that in their uh, handbook under 6.7.2 in the packet for this week. Applicants for building permit for new construction or addition to a business or industrial structure that creates a disturbance in lot coverage of 1,500 square feet or more in the aggregate, or if a change in occupancy, which increases the previously approved occupant load by 10% or more, or a change in use shall mm -hmm. submit 16. That's what triggers site plan review. What's right there in that. And I, I know previously, I think it was you, Barbara, asked, or maybe it was you, Peter, how do we know what triggered the increase in occupancy? Mm -hmm. um, so using the warehouse, uh, metric that they're using at 43 Main Street, it's one per 1,000 square feet. So I think there are uh, metrics used currently to figure out, it's it's one space per occupant or one per employee type of thing. Uh, the Board of Health probably has something based on the water usage uh, because septics are all designed based on usage. So that's probably actually the clearest way to say if they exceed the usage of the septic and they had to do a septic upgrade, that meant that they changed the occupancy by more than 10%. So if everybody agrees to this, I think we need to send it to Nate and Amy for a final blessing. And then we could post for a public hearing. If you wanted to make this amendment. I'd make a motion to do that. I think we've spent a lot of time on this and it sounds good to me. Appreciate your work, Mark. So I'll make a motion to um, send this draft um, revision over to Amy Quessel and Nate Darling for final review. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Barbara? Aye. Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Jack? Aye. Myself. Motion carries unanimously uh, to start this through the chain of command for uh, amending that bylaw for a site plan review. Um, next item number five is recodification of zoning bylaws. Um, Michelle, was this something you were involved in? Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Lillian had sent, uh, it over for the planning board to review, um, because they're, it looks like they're taking out the numbers and replacing it with lettering, um, for the section on page 11. And she just wanted us to review and, um, you know, give our approval if that's, if it looks okay for the zoning district. Um, it, it's renumbering to letters. And is this to eliminate redundancy? So we already have like 3.1 somewhere else in the bylaw. So we're trying to take multiple 3.1s out of it. I know that there were some, uh, yeah, um, multiple and designated paragraphs will receive subsections designated consistent with above outline. Um, I know there were some examples of that throughout um, and they were just gonna streamline it and make it, you know, fit all together better. Um, who else reviews this? Um, well, there's the, the committee that is, uh, the codification myself. committee. Yeah. So it's myself, Lillian, Nate Darling, and I believe that was it. And then two, two women from, um, the company doing the recodification. And is this based on their recommendation and everybody else on the board or the committee has already kind of agreed that this is good? Um, or you don't know? Well, I believe that, well, she's she's posing the question to planning board. So I'm not sure what their opinion is on this. 
Well, I don't have a problem with it. Um, I, I guess I have to assume that if other people are involved that help with reef codification, mm -hmm. they're doing it uh, with experience under their belt. Um, and you can always add more letters until you run out of the alphabet anyway. Um, and I, I think to their point, it helps to eliminate some of the multiple spots in the bylaw that have or the bylaws that have redundant numberings. So I have no problem with it. I don't, I don't see, I don't see a negative to it, Mark, either. You know, when I, when you look at their, they have an excellent example of it um, in, in their, in the attached um, example page. And it's, um, it makes perfect sense. You know, it gets rid of the complicated numbering system and changes to letters. So uh, it seems, seems like it makes sense to me. Robert, do you uh, want to weigh in at all? You know, um, <laughs> I, I, I would leave it up to, to people that have, you know, have put a lot more time and thought into it. I mean, I, I'm not one for change and I've been used to seeing it a certain way. So, but it's totally not a, really that big of a deal um, in my opinion. So I think the, the pros and cons are more interesting and probably more relevant for the people that will be using it like Nate. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and I think it's more important to gather their feedback. Um, well, I, I, I think if, if they're on the codification or recodification committee, I think that they're already seeing it. Yep. Um, I think it's fine. Uh, I mean, it, Kathy, this says action required by the board. I mean, are we actually specifically taking a vote on this or just sending a recommendation back to the codification committee? Ask. says that you have to approve the change on the email. Okay. Well, I don't think we're getting any pushback. So I'd make a motion to approve the change uh, from numbers to letters. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Barbara? Aye. Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Jack? Aye. Myself? Vote well, aye. Uh, so motion carries unanimously. Uh, next on the agenda, master plan implementation update fee review project. Uh, who has some input on this? The project that Michelle and I worked on, um, you may remember seeing this a couple of different times. I'm sorry, I thought I prepared this to be uh, printed and be more easily readable. Um, but what I did is, I don't know if anybody else has had a chance to look at it, but I just reviewed them and, you know, selected the ones that I felt were appropriate for the town by highlighting them with yellow. And then the areas that are green, um, you know, or orange, I sort of had up, up for discussion or questions. Um, and actually all of it's up for discussion. I don't want to imply that it's not. I, I just, I don't have feedback necessarily on some, some of the other categories because I don't really... I'm not really that familiar with all of them. So, you know, just starting at the top, I guess, if we were talking about an ANR right now, we're charging a hundred dollars a lot. Um, just to remind everybody, we selected these different communities on the basis of their similarity, similarity to our community and proximity as well. Um, you can notice that we put median sales price for the homes along the top, just to give us some bearing on, you know, what developers, our price range developers might be. And of course we know it's much higher than this now, but um, like for example, on the ANR, we're charging hundred dollars a lot. Freetown is charging hundred dollars. Middleborough is charging a buck 50. Carver's at 250, then for the filing and $200 for the lot. Raynham's $200, uh, Easton's 300 and so forth and so on. So uh, my recommendation in that case was that we go with 300, um, seemed like a reasonable but I'm not opposed to going the way Carver is, charge a filing fee plus the lot. Um, and actually, don't we have a filing fee for the form A? I think we do.
So I don't know if everybody's had a chance to look at this or wants to spend some more time on it or. Well, I thought we did kind of go through this line by line. I thought the last thing that we had was um, the site plan review fees that we were talking about a tier. And I thought Mark had said, you know, everybody send him our ideas for that. Okay. Um, but, but also I think uh, I was entering it as we were going through and I didn't save the file and I was like, oh crap. So I don't even have it still, unfortunately. I was hoping that maybe one, somebody else had either like written it down or like a record of it. It should be in our meeting minutes. Oh, that's um, true. We discussed it in it or video. So, um, and this, this last draft was dated 1210. So it's sometime in December was when we had this discussion. So perhaps what we should do is come up with a separate document that just breaks out what we said at the last meeting mm -hmm. uh, and then talk about the tiering for the site, uh, the site plan review process. Right. And that was kind of difficult because I was trying to use, you know, like certain sizes that are listed. Um, and, you know, we have like square footage and then we have acreage and it's, there's like a big gap between those sizes. Um, and, you know, cause you want something on the, on the bigger scale, that's this 25 acre or plus that you want to be, you know, the highest here. And then you want, you know, these smaller 1500 size or, or for example, the smaller ones that still come as a site plan review, even if they don't have to, I think we've had, you know, a couple of those or, or at least one of those um, that, you know, we, we wouldn't want to charge too much for something like that because we want them to still come before us. Mm -hmm. So there was like a big gap, which was, you know, definitely a good one to discuss because it you know, could go all anywhere in a big range. Um. So I guess what I'd like to ask the board is, you know, what can we do to what what do you guys think we can do to push this forward? Because we've got a lot of permits being pulled here. We've got a lot of development going on and we have needs and expenses in the town. And I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be looking to up these fees and, and especially for the larger developers, like it, ne it needs to be done. So what does so that mean? I just, I think that uh, if you're looking at using Carver, Rainham, and Plymouth. Yep. I think we should be sort of mirroring some of the costs that they're charging. I'm seeing for an A&R, 200 to 250. We're at 100 or half. Uh, the A&R form B, which is Usually, Kathy, you can back this up, but I don't think most builders do that. Form B is a preliminary plan for a subdivision. And most of them don't. I think they kind of come in and float it like for free. I've never <laughs> seen one, so. The form C. Um, so, you know, Plymouth has a clear cost, 2000 plus. 350 per lot. Uh, Rainham, 2000, 2500 without a preliminary plan. And then there's foot of the roadway, modification of the plan. I don't think those are unreasonable, and we're less than half. So I, I think. Let's let's mirror some of those other towns and just get up with the times. If you want to be a tick behind them or right at where they're at, I think that uh, it's not unreasonable. So, Mark, it's my understanding that once we all agreed on how we were changing this fee structure, it's a simple vote, and then and then it goes into effect. Uh, I'm not sure of that. Okay. I mean, it, it probably has to be posted with a, a hearing of some sort or a, at least a public meeting. Is that right, Kathy? 
I think so. I'd have to check, but because these fees are actually included in your rules and regulations, it might have to be advertised. So I would have to check that. Okay. So I, I do think we would need a hearing to do that, but I think if you wanted to, like I say, I'm, I'm satisfied with pick any one of those three towns, mirror those costs or be close to it. Um, so Mark, in the interest of just like plugging away at these, uh, can we just like start? Oh, you're muted. You lost it, Peter, you got muted. Ah, sorry. Um, let's just start right at the top, uh, you know, get Maybe it done. Uh, and A, uh, would everybody be a, agreeable to changing that to 250? Or do you see it wanting higher? I think 250 is good. I know where you want to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the changes while you talk. So hold on, let me open the file. <laughs> oh, let's see. My gosh, what did I call it? Planning board. Okay, I've got it open. Pete, what do you? What's your first comment? Which one do you want? Uh, a form A, uh, two hundred and fifty per okay. lot. It's in there. Okay. Does everybody agree with 250 a lot? Yes. Yes, I think it's fine. Like, I didn't want to get too crazy. It'd just, you know, bring us up a little bit and not. Um, yeah, no, out. Easton's at 300. Rainham's at 200. Plymouth's 250. I think you're kind of in the middle of those. Okay. Some of this 250 with the, for, with the plans plus 200 a lot. So that's, that's yeah. quite a bit more. I don't really understand why they do that, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. They, that doesn't really make sense to me, but they must feel as though that's that they just grab an extra two hundred fifty dollars more than everybody else. But what's that? What do you mean? Like why uh, two hundred fifty dollars for plans, two fifty a lot? These are four A's. So if we just do two fifty a lot, same. Well, I think that you need to qualify that. Then it's I, I I'd be fine with two hundred a lot because I think what they're trying to cover is. When somebody comes in and they take a 10 acre parcel and they get four form a lots out of it and they think that they can give you one two hundred dollar fee mm -hmm. so you just have to be clear and say it's form a lot is two hundred dollars not 200 for a plan right because you can have more than one a and r on a plan oh okay can we keep can we stick it keep it with uh 250. i think that was that was what everybody just did. Go ahead, Michelle. The 250. So you need to put the language in there per lot. Plus. Okay. That's what I got. Oh. 250 per lot. Per lot. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm just editing the spreadsheet and I'll circulate that. How about the form B? I know we don't see them, but we have to have a fee structure in there. So just looking at. Uh, Rainham and Easton, they're either one third or one fifth of what a form C is. Mm -hmm. So let's jump forward to a form C, which is a definitive subdivision plan. Mm -hmm. And what do we want to charge for that? And then we'll work backwards to the preliminary. So if, if I might throw a number out just to, um, to take a stab at it, uh, I was going to do 2000 plus 100 per lot. I'm sold. Okay. So let's say four hundred dollars for a form B. Yep, agreed. 25% of that cost. And if you wanted to put a clause in there that said that you did make it cheaper, like some of the towns do, definitive plans, 2,000 with a preliminary plan, 2,500 without. So you're getting it because that's Rainham and they charge 500 for the prelim plan. So you're getting 
it put towards the cost of the form C if you did put in a preliminary. I like that. I like that it would probably encourage people to do uh, more of the form B beforehand, maybe get us a, a second look, you know, like a first look as opposed to just one time in front of us. I, right. It would have to come back a second time if it was form B and then a C. So does anyone else agree to that? I think if you're trying to put the language in for that, Barbara, you'd put $400 or whatever I said, $500 for a form B mm -hmm. and then down below in line 20, well, put an asterisk mm -hmm. on the form C line after the 2000 yep. per lot, uh, hundred dollars per lot. Mm -hmm. And then down below with your asterisk, make the note that said, uh, it, it's almost like $1,500 for the uh, definitive plan if you did a preliminary plan. So it's the same cost. It's just we're giving them the option, like Michelle said, for, for less of a risk. You're paying the 500 and then it comes off the definitive land cost because you did it. Similar to Rainham's language. So 1500 for, uh, 1500 for a definitive plan if um, if you filed a preliminary plan, which is a form B. Nobody else seems to be charging anything for that other than us, we're charging $10. So maybe we should just leave it as it is. Should we raise it to 25 because it's 2021? Doesn't look like any other town charges for them. I don't know why we do and what it pays for, but we have it. Uh, uh, I think we should just delete that line, to be honest. Okay. I don't know what we'd use it for. I don't know how you'd collect it. Um, okay, I'm going to add delete line. Special permit. So I think the only special permit we do is Development Opportunities District. Uh, the fee is uh, one million. <laughs> <laughs> and that's cheap. Now, I think there was a fee associated with that project, but because but but it was because it's a 43D project. It was like a $400 fee that went along with that. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we are doing a special permit for Development Opportunities District, I think we probably want a fee involved with that. It's probably pretty good. We're talking about a development of a 25-acre parcel, that's bigger than any subdivision we've seen in a long time. That's why I went, I followed Carver's model because I felt like, you know, the bigger the project, the more time it is for everybody, the more involved it is. Um, and someone doing that size of project is not just a regular builder doing a regular house. So that's why I selected $500 plus the review and inspection or for review and inspection in five acres or less 2,500 over five acres, $500 per acre. It make a lot of sense, but that I made sense in my head. Um, so I think that's twenty. That's five hundred. It's twenty five hundred dollars for the review, and then if it's under five acres, maybe it's just the flat twenty five hundred. If it's over five acres, it's per acre charge. Um, I'm good with that. I just think if you're putting this in there under the special permit thing, uh -huh. you probably want to note that it is for the development opportunities district. Okay. Just to be clear, Kathy, are you aware of any other special permits that the planning board does grant? I'm not sure, but I think in the water resource district, maybe. 
So we might want to make a note in there, Barbara, to look for the water resource district to see what that would entail. To see if we want to put a permit fee on that as well in the same special permit line. Water resource district. Okay. Okay. Um, do you want to add a cost in there? Do you want to add numbers? Uh, for water resource district? No, let's start with the development opportunities district and the water development district we'd have to look at. Right? Oh, I, I was, I thought you had already added like the Carver type of thing. Oh, I'm or, sorry. Okay. So you want me to add in another row for, for water? Uh, water. Uh, well, I just, if we offer, if the planning board oversees two special permits, either two separate lines or you just have two fees clearly marked out, first fee, DO. Okay. You know. All right. I almost think if you're doing development opportunities, you start with two thousand dollars. Okay. And then you do the per acre thing. Well, no, I mean you know it's going to be twenty-five acres. Or more. Or more. Uh, Over twenty-five acres, uh, five hundred dollars an acre. Is that too much? I don't think so. Not have many of them anyway, but. And then the water development district special permit. Um, I really am not even familiar with what that it involves. So I don't know what kind of price tag to put in there. Should I leave it blank? Yeah, I just put a question mark so we come back to it. Okay. Um, uh, I, so uh, just, just so we know what we just did mm -hmm. using 43 Main Street as the example, if they had the pay for a special permit for the development opportunities district, it would be $14,500. Yeah, I just did the same math, Mark. And um, I, that's the, the over, the over 25 is sort of what like, um, uh, I, I'm not sure I agree with going to 500 an acre. You know what I mean? In some instances, there might come a time when we want people to take more acreage and it's just not used, but it's in their, it's in their plan. Do you know what I mean? It, it, they may not use all of it. It's just a large tract of land. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and to say, hey, every every um, every acre way back in those woods is another five hundred dollars, and they're untouched and they're un. Um, you know what I mean? Depending on what somebody does. Does that make sense? It does I understand where you're getting at, Peter? And I just want to float this out. It's not on the agenda tonight, but we're sort of dancing around this and we've taken it off the agenda, but the development opportunities district, it was suggested to me that <clears throat> rather than, uh, cause I, I heard that there's a citizen's petition to try and eliminate it, but it, I don't know that it's gonna make the town warrant review. Um, it was suggested that we don't eliminate it. We increase the acreage and we put on stipulations for open space. That's a great idea. So again, it was uh, suggested by somebody who was really smart and used to be involved in town. Um, and I, 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 as soon as I heard it, heard it, I thought it was a great idea. So that's something to consider if we want to put that back on the agenda at some point. That sort of plays into the, um, the, the additional 500 per acre as well right there. Right, that would be killing. If you charge him 500 and force him to leave it in open space, <laughs> That, that yeah, it just, it drives a nail that's not necessary, you know, um, so, you know, if, if that's the, if that's the direction we take in maybe in six months or a year or whatever, um, we wouldn't want to rewrite these prices all over again. So I, I just assume just stick with 2000 flat, you know, probably won't see this, um, happen again. And it, it's not much money really that we're talking about. So. Yeah, because I mean, at that, if we're going to do uh, a project like that, we'd have a peer review involved. So we'd have the, the backup of that, which would be a cost to the applicant. It's not a, a revenue stream for the town, but would be protected and at least 
Yeah, there'd be, there'd be a, a decent fee involved with the amount of work that goes into something like that. So we're taking out the $500 an acre, we're leaving it in. And, um, you know, my feeling is having, you know, in the past when we, you know, as I was involved in buying buildings, office parks and stuff like that, they don't care. Developers don't really care that much. It's smaller developers that care about the costs, you know, it's the bigger yep. guy. It's just, you know, so anybody that's going to do something this big, you know, on a 25 over acre, I don't care what they pay because I think it doesn't, it's really six and one half dozen. $14,000 in the scope of what Rhino is doing is not a drop in the bucket. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, it, and meanwhile, it's sucking the life out of the rest of us. Um, so. Yeah, I'm all for that, um, Barbara. However, we don't see that 14,000. It just goes into an empty fund and, it, and we're not getting better <laughs> for it, you know? So. I mean, we can't go to lunch on that. I'm no. kidding. Of course. Um, if we had a budget, maybe. Yeah. Maybe we could. <laughs> nice plug. Well, again, though, keep in mind the, the the reason to adjust this is to to place the planning board more in line with covering the cost of a planner. I still think the five hundred per acre. I I don't think it's too much for a big development. No. I don't. Well, if you guys I like that, I don't have any problem with it. That's fine by me. Jack, what do you think? I agree with you. I think large developers, to them, it, this is a drop in the bucket. It's not an issue. They want to move on with the project. Yeah. Well, let me, let, me, let me be devil's advocate for what we're saying. And if you divide it into 25 acre parcels and you make two, it's only four grand. But if you keep it as a 50 acre parcel, it's 14.5. Right, the first twenty-five acres is two grand, mm -hmm. and then every acre after twenty-five acres is five hundred additional dollars. Yeah. So, wouldn't that promote the developer to say, "Let's divide it before we apply for a permit, and we'll develop it in two phases"? I think it'd be expensive for them to go through the process of a special permit twice. I mean, I guess they could, but I don't know. Well, I just I. Again, I think I think I'd rather say five thousand for the permit and a hundred dollars an acre, or, or two fifty an acre. Let's do that. To kind of kind of make it more in check with it, it's an even cost per acre after that base fee. So, what do you think about five thousand for the? Um initial application fee and then over 25 acres dollars an acre it's quite a quite a jump so it's a wash it's so a how wash. about just how about regardless of the 25 how about like because the do district has to be 25 or more so to avoid uh mark's devil's advocate why don't we just make it to the 200 per acre so if they were to keep it whole or separate it, it's still the same. You know what, that, that's sort of a good point too, because you can divide up and develop three acres in development opportunities district. Uh, if you read the way I think that the structure that's written, you have to have 25 acres and it all has to be deemed towards it, but you can cut it up and say, we're gonna put a roadway and we're gonna make a three acre lot here and a four acre lot here so we probably want to reread the bylaw as far as uh, almost like B and Z brack and trying to figure out how a, a developer would find their way around it if they were going to cut it up because you can cut it up into less acres as long as the whole parcel is part of the end development. You know, my experience is large developers don't want to have to go through multiple permitting processes. You know, the, the money is that, you know, it's the, the legal fees of going through the permitting is the biggest factor. The time is, well, because time is money. 
Yep. Okay, so what am I using, guys? What are you thinking? Not to put you on the spot, but. Did you say 200 or 250 per acre, Michelle? Two fifty, same as the four May. I agree. Okay, so right. it's five thousand base fee and two fifty per acre. So it doesn't matter if they cut off a piece, or if they develop forty six acres, or if they develop twenty six acres. It, it's just by the acre. Right. And would you want to put a waiver in there for open space? Uh, I think the special permitting authority could do that, couldn't they? Why advertise a waiver? Hmm. Oh, I think we need to put it in there then in the rules and regs of the DO. Hmm. But yeah, yeah I, I understand what you're saying too, but. Who has the list of changes for the DO? I, I'll make a note, but my notes are crazy right now. Uh, I don't. Mark, you, you just said we need to add Michelle's the note taker. She's she's the one that's sharp. So we're at, we need to add in um, and by revision to rules. It, we we talked about increasing the acreage and then putting an open space okay. clause in there. Right. With with uh, with uh, authority to modify fees in exchange for open space. Well, if we're putting an open space clause in there, I, I guess that's we need to discuss it. That's something if we're going to. Open space, I, I, but we need to add that to the, Kathy, can you add that to the Development Opportunities District? We're gonna add that for the next time we talk about this topic, which I think is gonna mark is gonna be March or April. It's out there, it's in the distance on our scheduling, but um, we definitely need to do that. Okay, changes, can, uh, can we move, move on, are we good? $5,000 base fee, $250 per acre. Wait a minute. What? Read that back. Applies to Development Opportunities District, $5,000 and then $250 per acre. Is that wrong? I thought we were just going to switch it to $250 per acre, not, not the $5,000. So it, it ends up being... The same thing as an A&R. It's the same price. No, it's per lot. An ARR is 70,000 square feet. Uh, so a 25 acre parcel would be $6,250, which is the minimum for the DO currently. But if it was 10 acres more, it would be an extra 2,500 bucks. I, I like that, just 250 per acre, but there's the base minimum size anyway and if we wanted to increase the lot size just makes the fee a little higher and less less possibility of certain lots being developed there's so much more time that goes into this but you know whatever you guys think um I don't know. I think 6,500, it still sounds low, doesn't it? So if you look over on Plymouth's uh, for five to 15 lots, it's five, they've got it tiered. It goes up and, and 25 lots is $25,000. Is that for a subdivision? Uh, that's for a special permit. Must be subdivision. Unless that's commercial subdivision for business properties. Yeah. I mean, that's a thousand dollars an acre. Well, I mean, the bottom line is we don't have a lot of these left. Um, it's it's very time intensive when we have it, and the town is very much not wanting the development. So I have no problem doubling that fee. I don't care. It doesn't. It doesn't. I don't like. What Jack said, I just don't think the developer cares that much. If the okay. legal fee to have them present is going to cost far more. What do you than think, Peter? Five hundred an acre? Yeah, that that would equate to about a minimum would be about thirteen thousand. Okay. No. Yeah, twenty twelve five. Yep, that's fine. 
And, okay. and I wouldn't do anything just yet for um, waiving the fee for open space. But uh, I, I think that um, if, if we rewrite, rewrite this in the future, we, uh, we go right back to this and add that, you know, as a, a little incentive. It's not much, but waive the fee for the uh, acres that become open space. Okay, so the next box was the water development special dis uh, water development district special permit. I'm leaving that blank because I'm unfamiliar with it. Unless anybody else wants to chip in, that'll be a next edit. Uh, next one would be changes. Um, changes. I selected Easton's fee structure, which had three hundred dollars for a minor change, for a major change, fifteen hundred dollars plus three fifty for advertising. What is Middleborough charging? Oh, she gave me a handout. Town of Middleborough's fees are not, I couldn't find them on their website. They had to send them over. Can I ask when we, when we actually uh, charge these and uh, for what? Kathy, have we charged these? Yeah. Gotcha. Like, I, I'm saying a change on what? On a subdivision, on a special permit? I'm not sure what that is. That I don't know either. Uh, I've yet to see that so far. Well, right now we're supposed to be charging $100 per change. Um, so what I think about when I think about that is the develop, they present a plan, we spend time looking at it, then they have to make some changes and then they have to resubmit it and we have to look at it again. I think it's more to discourage changes than anything else. Mm. Uh, plus it, it's more work, right? The only thing with that is, and I think we talked about this last time, is if it's changes that we're asking them to make, we don't want to charge them too much because, you know, they're going to come back with, you know, the revisions that we've asked for. That's fair. So changes um, made by developer. Not requested changes. You guys agree with that? Yes. I, I agree with it for the sake of just keeping it in there, but I, I see it as being very difficult to enforce and difficult to, uh, you know, who do they, after the fees are paid, then you say, oh, by the way, you owe us this, this, and this for those changes. Do you remember the ones you made? You know what I mean? Well, I guess Kathy's the cop on that, right? Because she's the one that has to take the plans in and she knows it's aggravating when we have to do the more work. So <laughs> it would be up to her to be the one to be like, nope, sorry, you got to pay a fee for that. I don't know. I don't, I would love to see how many fees we're actually even collecting because I don't know that we, we're, we could just be spending time on this and it's no, no real use. Um, so what do you think guys, what should we do there? So my, my vote, um, delete that category, but I'm just one. What do you think about the, the language, the way Stowe has it? It's 50 to $500, depending on public hearing need. That seems fair, but. Okay, so we want to delete that. Anybody else want to delete it? Or leave it blank? I see what Stowe says, but that would, so they're saying the change would be so great that we would have to reschedule or have a second public hearing. Th th then yeah, I would agree that something should be, but that's really rare. You know what I mean? So I think that's the way Easton has it broken up between a minor change and a major change. A major change is, you know, potentially public hearing time. Well, so wouldn't almost what we had earlier for the PAA meeting, wouldn't that have been a change that they came back because they wanted to change it from the sale units to the rent, the lease units. Um, so I think that should have been charged for a change to the developer. And um, 
And obviously, I mean, we had town council involved and we probably should have the first time. So I, I do think um, we should leave the leave it in. And I think it should be more representative of those fees. Um, I, I think I'd, I, I, I do like the 550 to 500, but then who, who, who determines that I think is the difficult thing to answer there. Uh, so I think I'd, I, I'd rather something just in that range, maybe like a two, 250 or something, or keeping it in that 250 to 300 range. I'm not sure. What yeah, maybe something that would even remotely help to defray our just this evening's legal costs alone would help, you know, mm. um, that wasn't free. So uh, a change fee would have um, would have helped with that. So I agree. I take back what I said. <laughs> Keep the change. <laughs> what about if we had a minor fee, a minor charge of, of $200, which is $100 more than we're charging now when we charge it? And a major would be like something like this or another larger development where it's really time consuming, legal has to get involved. And if there's advertising, they pay for the advertising. Yeah. So 200 for a minor, 1500 for a major plus 350 for advertising. I don't know what advertising costs are, but. Don't we bill it back to them anyway? Or... I don't know. Hmm. Kathy? Do we build back developers for advertising? Probably not. I mean, I'm not we don't have the manpower to be advertised as the form C. I don't think that they got billed. But like for ZBA, when we advertise, it's included. They they pay for it up front. It needs to be paid up front. Mm. So you know, might want to put in just an average amount, say for advertising, because it's a lot easier to get it that way than try to bill them and get the check back. It's kind of like extra work. It's better to get it up front. Do you think three fifty is reasonable, or it should be two fifty, or what do you think? Um, maybe meet in the middle. <laughs> okay. Two hundred. Because ZBA, it's it's 120. We have a contract, though. So it probably would be about 200. Okay. Is everybody okay with 200 for advertising? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 100. Yeah. Engineer review fee right now, it's a pass-through. I'd like to see it left that way. I don't think it needs to be a profit center or a cost center for us. Or if we're going to tack on a fee, it should be their cost plus a percentage of that. What do you guys think? I think both those categories should just stay as is. Um, they, we, we pass the cost along directly. Yep. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Sign permit, um, non-conforming sign permit or sign permit period. So we're using 250 right now. I wasn't sure whether that was conforming or non-conforming if it's always 250, um, but I'm fine leaving it at 250. Isn't the sign permit um, elsewhere in the town? Like um, on its own little permit, own, own application payable right at the clerk? Yeah, I, I don't think that the planning board does that. All we do is grant a sign location when we do site plan review. So I don't think that we charge that. I'm gonna put delete on here at, uh, because it was someplace I pulled, I pull, when I did Lakeville, I pulled it off of something that we had. So we're gonna say delete that line. Retainer fees, um, I put that in orange because I really don't know what that is. What retainer fees? That's that's an engineer review fees, right? Oh, yeah. No, that's the accept the pre acceptance of the road, a linear foot, um, in lieu uh, using a bond, the fifteen foot per linear foot. Okay. That's I don't know why it's. It, I guess a retainer fee is uh, the way to properly um, to describe it. What do we think about leaving it the same? Has it been a problem? The 15 foot has been uh, examined a few times over and I thought everybody was kind of agreeing like, yeah, that's about what it would cost to fix. So, uh, you know, um, based on like what pops up typically over a, a year or two. Okay. 
would you want to go back to the, the water resource district? Sure. Okay. Water resource protection district regulations. Uh, for the purpose of protecting groundwater and other resources in the town, uh, there and hereby establish water resource protection regulations as part of the zoning bylaw. These regulations apply throughout the town. I'm going to skip a little bit. Uh, such uses where lawfully existing may be continued but may not be expanded or altered without a special permit. For the special permit granting authority, which for the purposes of this section of the zoning bylaw is the planning board. Outdoor storage, I'm sorry, 7.2.2.1 in the zoning bylaw. Outdoor storage of the following substances, salt, snow melting chemicals, hazardous sub substances such as pesticides, herbicides, and our water soluble and volatile chemicals compounds, this prohibition, this prohibition shall include without limitation outdoor storage of materials containing or coated with such chemicals susceptible to being carried into surface or groundwater. Adopted May 10th, 1982, 7.2.2.2, disposal, use as fill in layers or in bulk stockpiling of any demolition materials, waste or residue typically known as sludge, uh, fly ash, or any other substance that contains hazardous chemicals or other compounds that are hazardous. Adopted June 11, 2001, approved by Attorney General, September 19, 2001. So basically that it's either salt, pesticides or a dump. And that's a special permit granted by planning board. That sounds more like CONCOM, doesn't it? Or so some special permit under four, page 42, 7.4. Um, okay. So here's the thing about this. Um, I think in my kids' generation, we're gonna be looking at a whole new world of water contamination and pollution. And I wanna be as strict about this as we possibly can for their sake. I don't know if anybody's so, following what's happening in San Francisco, but the pollution in the ground is coming up. So if we had a case where we had a special permit that we were getting ready to adopt and it involved this type of work, we would be collecting an additional fee if, am I, if I'm understanding this correctly, for that special permit as it relates to their water usage. And um, in that case, I think we should be charging quite a bit. It's expensive. You'd have to bring in a specialist to advise you and it's above and beyond. Um, yeah, so I, I think that was the whole purpose of this bylaw was to yeah. regulate it clearly. Yeah. So... I, I, and I think it's broken up into two different sections. One would be maybe somewhat permissible as like, you know, the town barn has a big stockpile of salt and snow melting chemicals uh, annually. And that's probably more permittable. Again, with proper oversight, then basically the second one is a dump. Uh, but by the bylaw, it's allowed, but if you wanted to make the fee for 7.2.2.1, outdoor storage of salt, snow melting chemicals, uh, you know, $1,000, $2,000 for that special permit. And for a dump, right, that's a million? I don't know. What's the permit to have uh, demolition materials stockpiled? Uh, <laughs> I think we said a minimum, but it needs to be at the discretion of the um, special permitting authority because each situation is going to be different and the engineers are going to be assessing the risk, right? 
Yeah, this this to me sounds more than just um, construction debris. So it sounds like it a could lot be of this material residue, typically known as sludge, waste sludge, fly ash, other substances that contain hazardous chemicals or compounds that are hazardous. I almost think that should be tiered by volume. You know, it, I mean, you're gonna get into outdoor, we're gonna get into bat, I don't know. I guess they can always change it down the road, but. Well, there's no fee right now. Yeah, right, there's no fee right now. Hmm. I don't know. What well, so it's a special permit. So we already did the DO one, which is the five thousand application fee plus two fifty per acre. Why don't we keep it along the same sort of lines and and for this water resource district have a a flat fee and you know do it like I don't know per per cubic foot or right. right. How do you how do you tier that? I, I I'm agreeing with you, but I just I don't know how to quantify the, the sludge pile that we don't have yet as to how you cheer the volume of it. I know it, it would be ongoing. It sounds like this is, this would be a permit to, to yeah. allow it to continue happening. So it would have to be happening already. You'd be talking about a, a, a place that took in construction waste. Or, or produced it or and not just produced, uh, had it as, as a matter of storage. So I'm thinking about batteries. Right, large scale batteries. So you had a business and they had no intention of having a problem with it, but now they're storing batteries um, on site. This is a tough one. Do you think this is something that maybe... Um... I'll talk to Nate about it maybe. Yeah. Yeah, we, we don't have to have an answer right now, but I just... While you guys were talking on one of the other things, I decided to look it up. So I just wanted to circle back to it so we didn't just not come back to it. Um, but I guess, Mark, my only other comment on it is since we don't want that kind of pollution happening here, period, I'm fine. If it was $5,000, the meaning that if a business had that type of operation and they were going to come in front of us that a spe or, or the special permitting, you know, whatever, uh, for this, that they have to pay a very sizable fee just to have the discussion. Otherwise, don't. Um, well, just say, for example, you have a landscaper who gets a 10 wheeler load of salt and sand mixed. Tiered. Okay. In November, that he applies, he covers it with a tarp. To me, that's not the same as the sludge factory. That's why I said to tear it between those two. Because the first one seems more allowable as long as you knew what was going on. $1,000 fee, $500 fee yep. for that. But then you get into the actual, some sort of a, a dump. And I think that's the $5,000 one. So how about if we have tiered by hazard type? Now, we'll have to figure out the language. So I'm just writing some notes. So... Um, One fee for the uh, for landscaping. So we're going to go back to that one at some point, maybe run this by Nate, anybody else who might be interested. I'm going to leave that one in yellow. Oh, 
if, if you guys agree with that, then we're going to be down to site plan review. Which is the okay. point. Clicked out of it. I know we were like two fifty and a thousand. What two fifty and a thousand? Is that what site plan reviews at currently? Yes. A major and a minor. Yes, that is what we have down below. I'm sorry, I don't know if we have two different categories. Okay. So, I, I, I almost think that needs to be tiered. Mm -hmm. Uh. You know, I look at any small business, uh, use the, the one, 149 Bedford Street that we looked at not long ago. Uh, I think $1,000 is reasonable to say we looked at the whole site, but, and again, I know it's in the development opportunities district. You could take a 20 acre parcel that's gonna have major development. I think $1,000 is, they're getting away with something. So maybe I have a major and a minor and on the major you have an acreage clause that if it's over three acres, it's $500 an acre additional cost. Okay, cheered. <clears throat> the minor is still gonna be 250? Yeah, I think that's. Uh, major is over, how many acres, Mark, did you just say? Well, I think you do a major at a thousand. And yep. maybe have that as a, a three acre, you know, major. Up to three acres. Yeah, up to three acres and anything over three acres is an additional $500 an acre. Okay. And I think we can reserve the right to waive a fee if we felt uh, I think to Peter's point earlier, if it just happened to be a five acre parcel, they were putting something small in, in the front acre, or there was a lot of wetlands, or they just weren't developing four acres of five. I don't think we want to charge them additional acreage fees if they're leaving it open space. Uh, so we could always deal with that by waiving some of the fees, but we don't have to advertise that. I think it might be beneficial though to say something like a like a asterisk saying you know planning board reserves the right to waive fees based on amount of open space being preserved or something like that so that because if if they're not aware that they could benefit from saving the open space then maybe they would be less inclined to do so well i take it a step further i'd like to see them that the land be land banked so it's open space land bank, but I don't know. I suppose it needs a lot more thought, but I like it. So I just added into the into the um, notes section that the uh, we have the authority to waive the fees, but that's going to have to go into the into the actual rules and regs, right? Kathy, would you? Weigh in on that because I think that planning board, I think in the past, has occasionally, well, even major and a minor is somewhat subjective. So that's you, you, you almost could waive the major for a minor if you felt like it wasn't that bad.
Okay. I know it's getting late for everybody. Yeah, it's getting almost like hospital property. <laughs> yeah, a little pain. <laughs> um, okay, so again, this is just a draft and we can circulate this so other people are gonna have feedback into it as well. Um, so under site plan review, we did tiered. I have minor at 250, major up to three acres at 1,000, over three acres, $500 per acre. And then under notes, I have planning board has discretion to waive fees, which would that would have to be incorporated into our rules and regs. So that's not that wouldn't be published unless it was published in. I don't know. I think that would be. Um, I th I think that whole. I mean, we checked the legality on it, but I do think that's a good option to say planning board waives the or reserves the right to waive acreage fees uh, for an applicant uh, saving open space or whatever, you know, to give an incentive to not develop to 70% lot coverage on everything. Okay, um, I'm gonna add to that open space. Um, I wouldn't add native in there or something because I think that when developers go, okay, well, I'm not gonna develop this portion. I'm gonna still consider this open space because I left it grass. <laughs> I don't know, that's almost something for conservation to get into, not us, or me anyway. Okay, so I put here, planning board has a discretion to waive fees for a development which preserves open space. Okay with that? Yeah, Pete's nodding. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next one is waiver. Um, we have 250 waiver, 500. I don't know when, when we're using a waiver, that's why I highlighted in orange, I don't know. We don't have anything for that category now. So. So I think that that's probably something that when we go through our rules and regulations, we probably need to look at some of the waivers that or the, the rules that are in there that we give waivers on typically. Mm -hmm. I know, I think one of the past uh, strategies was we have 10 regulations that are, we say real strict or difficult to develop to that standard mm -hmm. that we almost always give a waiver on. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to charge to give a waiver that we probably shouldn't be requiring a regulation that we would normally just waive because it was silly. Of it. And, <laughs> we shouldn't we, even have it. We if kept the rule in there just in case it was a developer we didn't like. <laughs> wouldn't that be arbitrary and capricious? No. <laughs> no. That's one opinion. Okay. Okay, so am I taking it out? Just leave it blank? Um, well, I'm, I'm not saying that. I mean, it, could you come to mind any specific waiver that we would give and want to charge to give that relief? There's a long list of waivers I can think of, but um, none that I would say that like we would turn around and say, oh yeah, and if we give it, that's $300 or that's $500 because- it sounds like, that, that sounds like extortion. It does. And uh, it, you get into the thing that'd be like, somebody might be like, uh, never mind, I'll just do it. You know, you, you want them to have their mind made up and this is what they're asking for and you rule on it. You know what I mean? And we don't typically charge for waivers. This is right. just something that some other towns do, Barbara. That's correct. So I'm going to delete this line, but delete line. Okay. That's fine. Copy of rules and regs. We're currently charging 30 bucks. Um, I realize most people have printers at home these days and are using stuff online, so we probably don't have to do this very often, but it is taking time away from our staff who has many other things to do. So in order to discourage that, I would say 50 bucks. Does anyone have any problem with that? Would no. we have a set to sell somebody if they came in? Yeah. They have to it. <laughs> oh, I'd have to print it. Oh, you'd have to print it, all right. Yeah. Do you ever have anybody ask for that? 
No, nobody ever asks, but it would be 50 bucks. Public hearing fee, um, I put in pass through. Plymouth is charging a buck 10, right? Because we're, it, we know it could almost delete that line because the advertising fees are already passed through, right? Or do you think, do we think that it's hard enough on our staff that we should be charging a fee for that? Well, again, I, again, if this is being tiered to cover some of the costs of a planner, mm -hmm. A planner might do some preparation work in advance of a public hearing okay. for the board members. So a hundred dollars is not unreasonable if we had a planner in place. Okay. What do you want? Now, free acceptance. That goes, uh, who's charging that? So Easton's charging 500 bucks for that. That's. But when we go through that process, we have uh, peer review, go out and check it. Correct. Um, so should we charge in a fee on top of that? Because that peer review is at the developer's cost, right? Pete? Yes, it's pass through. Yep. So I'm gonna just put pass through. Is that what you guys want me to do? I would delete the, the title for street acceptance because it, engineer review fee, it, it's, it's right well, there. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Okay. Again, what what if we had a town planner and they were going out and looking at some of this stuff on behalf of the board? We're we're paying their payroll, and if the the board of selectmen is serious about trying to hire a planner, I don't think we want to just x out some of these things. I think that uh, even if it's just an, a nominal token fee that we could adjust, I don't want to just delete the line. Okay, two fifty. That seems low to me. If a planner is going to go out and look at a site, that's yeah, the, the planner, unless they're a civil engineer, though, they're not going to take the place of a design uh, of an engineer. So they might go and might be interesting, but you, so, you know. All right, so use that, uh, the, the recent one that we had signed off and say, you know, it, that got paved a long time ago and then right. it sat and we did have a peer review done. Let's say we had a peer review done initially and then it sat and then the applicant came in and said, oh, hey, I want the bond released. I, got to apply. And so we said, why don't we have the planner go out and take a peek? And if he thinks there's any issues based on the report we have, he can cross reference. We can call the peer review guy back, but if he can go out and say, hey, you know, it still looks fine based on the pictures that were submitted by the peer review guy 14 months ago, he's providing a service to the town Mm -hmm. uh, even if it's to determine if it needs to be peer reviewed. But what if he comes back and says, ah, that's, the catch basins are all full of sand and leaves and stuff. I think we got to have peer, peer review. It costs something for them to go out there and do that. Yeah, okay. So what would you recommend, Mark, for cost or fee? What's the actual specific uh, description? Street acceptance. And the only town that I saw that, or the only was Easton has it on theirs. And they charge 250? Um, 500. 500. I'm totally fine with, with, you know, we do have to cover the cost of the planner. That's, you know, makes sense to me. I agree with the 250, it makes sense. Yep. Or 250. Okay, so I'm going to put in 250. The line below that shows site plan review, which is a duplicate. I just moved any of the other fields up so we would have that for our records. And I'm going to delete that line. And then I'm going to finish this off and send it off to you guys. Excellent. Okay. All right. All right. Since I am still waiting to finish eating my dinner, <laughs> I'm going to ask if we can move to the next item unless we have more questions on this. We're going to have to see this again. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, can I zip us along? Did anybody review the minutes for January 28th, 2021? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Does anybody want to note any changes or are they good with what was drafted? No, nope, I'm good. Motion to approve. I second that motion. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Barbara? Aye. Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Jack? Aye. Myself? Aye. Motion carries unanimously to approve the minutes 
a meeting for the planning board January 28th, 2021. Uh, I believe there's no other old business or new business. Does anybody have anything to? I, yeah, I wanted to fill you guys in on a couple of things from Serpid last night. Um, I think this is material stuff. Okay, put it over here. So the first thing I think that's very important for us to know is that apparently the um, federal government changed something in the Department of the Interior made a law change or ruling change either December or January of this year. And the end result is going to be that this casino that they've been looking forward to doing for some time um, will, this consensus seems to be that this is definitely going to be moving forward and it'll be pretty hard to stop it at this point. So we'll see if that actually comes to fruition, but I want people to be aware that that's on the Lakeville line on the Taunton side. Um, sort of, I don't know, we, I used to go do the strawberry picking over there, but it's it's kind of closer to Silver City Galleria, but on this on side. On Stevens Street? Yes, thank you. It is um, already like concrete in the ground. They, they poured foundations in there and then they had to stop. Yeah, so that's, they're gonna move forward, they're not, you know. Um, okay, the other thing I wanted to share with you is update on the Silver City Galleria site. Um, that property is being proposed to be a very large scale warehouse distribution center. Welcome to warehouse okay. land. Uh, retail is dead officially, I guess. And um, so the other thing that's a little bit concerning about that is there's discussion about on the back side of the property where the train tracks uh, line up, not on the highway side, but on the other side, there would be a um, crash rail. I wish I could see my exact notes. I wrote down the words. Uh, the transfer station, that's what it's called. Yeah, transfer station. So um, that's going to be, that's something that's going on for Taunton right now. Expecting that to be housing. Um, I, that's just what I thought it would end up being. I thought it would just end up being a giant 40R because of the train station that's going in across there. But uh, distribution warehouses take the day. Um, there is going to be a bunch of information about a new resilience plan. I did not receive the handout, but when I get that, I'm going to send it around. It's really important stuff. Multi-year integrated planning. Um, and there's some funding available for that if we needed to get some people involved. So I will circulate that when it's available. Um, we talked about the FEMA maps. The other thing we talked about was in Middleborough, um, and I did not, I actually, she did send it to me and I didn't get it over to you guys, but I'll forward this over. Uh, they're they're going to have a 29 acre uh, 40R development. It's going to be mixed use, commercial and residential, probably 150 to 200 units is, is what's being proposed. And this development would be right around where the train station is um, uh, in Middleborough. So the new train station location there. Okay. So I, that was a concern to me and something I definitely wanted to bring up for us because what concerns me if this uh, 40, you know, if the big warehouse goes in for, for Rhino, we're going to have a lot of people that are walking from Lakeville across the way because I don't think the train is not planning on any transport. We're going to have a lot of truck traffic and a lot of additional residential traffic that will be moving through that center. Um, and I am concerned about that exchange. It's a pretty good sized development. And I think it should be, I think it's something with the 40B, we need, or 40B project we need to get. The DOT needs to be aware of that as well, because I mean, I know they are, and I don't need us to tell them, I guess, but a little bit What's scary. The, what side of 495 is it on? Um, Let me forward it over to you. If I send it to Kathy, actually I can just forward it to all you guys, right? Uh, I just got it late in the day, guys. I'm sorry. Um, I just I wanted her their permission before I spoke about. Um, let's see. Not before I spoke about it. So I got Michelle. I got Mark. Got Kathy. Got Nate. And me, Jack. Jack Lynch. Okay, there we go. Oh, we want that guy on there. Okay. 
All right, so I'm just gonna forward that over. Um, so when you look at it, it's going to apply to basically um, both sides, um, both sides of the train track heat. So where we thought, so right now where we have, um, there's a new bank that's going in there and there's a gas station, I think on the corner. Yeah. Uh, Harbor One's going in there, um, Harbor One Bank. That area, this, that blue area is all going to be an overlay. So it's gonna go from 495 up to Route 28, bordering along 105. And that will be a 40 yard development because of the train station. Hmm. Commercial and 150 to 200 units. Um, so I thought it was real important to bring that up to you guys tonight. And let you know. Hey, Barbara, a question for you on Rhino uh, and you know the uh, commuter rail. You know, wouldn't Rhino be almost obligated to provide some kind of shuttle service from their facility to the? No, no, because they won't. Um, you know, unless they're employees, they've got a lot of employees using it. And then I don't know that they would. I think most of the traffic using the train station is commuting into town and back to town. Um, it's in and out of Boston. Yeah, true. You yeah. know, so, and, it, and we're at this, until the South Line connects, um, it, it'll be a few years. The 140 interchange, that's the other, only other comment is the 140 interchange right now that uh, 140 and 24. I can't stand that exchange, and I, I can't believe they haven't done anything about the, the signage there. It's just disgusting. But that project will be starting up sometime in the next few months. So um, they said maybe two to four months uh, that, that that construction would begin on, on redoing that exchange. And that's going to be a really big project. It's going to take a couple of years to get done. Covered a lot of stuff really fast. Uh, the only other thing I want to add is that I have signed up for a class uh, for the housing. It's it's not open. It's not an open uh, invitation at this time, but I'll take very good notes and share it. But it's going to talk about uh, the Housing Choice Act of 2020 that Governor Baker just instituted and some of the other things that are coming down the pike. Um, the reality is that the housing crisis is turning into an emergency for the state, no question about it. We need more development. Um, so they're gonna, they're really gonna strong arm us, I think. On some that's, of the a, that's a class on webinar, right? You can sign up for? No, that, that particular one is a SERPID uh, sponsored. Oh, okay. Cause I signed up for the other one. Oh yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, the, more the, the more the merrier to go to that. Good. Hey, that's all I have for, for Serpent. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Michelle? Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to bring it up. Um, the Board of Selectmen on their Monday night meeting uh, towards the, like, the last 30 minutes, Leah brought this up and I was like, oh, I'm like alone cheering for her. Um, sh she brought up the CPA, the Co Conservation Protection Act. And so it, it's already existing in the general bylaws um, that a, a committee can be formed in regards to this. And if, as soon as like sh she was gonna reach out to, I think all the boards, cause it's supposed to be a nine member committee. Um, you know, somebody from CONCOM, uh, the historical commission planning board, um, the park commission the Housing Authority, Open Space, and three that are appointed by Board of Selectmen. So I was really excited to hear that brought up. Um, I would love to, you know, join a committee if we have the chance. I would love to join a committee and see if we could come up with something that um, the town would actually vote for in a town meeting that would preserve some of these open space lands, especially the Chapter 61 properties that are coming out of the Chapter 61. So, so that we actually have funds within the town to use rather than relying on funds from the state or some other agency stepping into our shoes to purchase those lands and protect them. So I'm excited about that. Yay, long time coming. Very, very, very badly needed. If you do get involved in that, Michelle, uh, something that was suggested to me by Nate was uh, 
with all the commercial development that's coming into town now to try and put together a bylaw that would take a percentage, a reasonable, like 10% of the, the gain in property tax to go into a fund for open space that, you know, it, it wouldn't be controlled by the open space committee. It would be funded by the board of selectmen, but the open space committee would be the one that would find the land. And I, I think from what I read about this, this committee, the conservation protection act committee, I think that would almost do a similar job. Like it would look for those lands or it would, it would work with the different committees to, um, you know, designate or, or, or how would it be funded though? Does it say how it would be funded? Same way? That I I believe is something that would have to be passed through the town meeting and it's been voted down twice, unfortunately. I remember the last time it was voted down. They gave a, an estimated amount of taxes each person would pay and that pretty much sealed it, you know? Well, was why, that? why don't they just take it from new development and then nobody pays anything yeah. extra. It's just less goes into the general fund out of the $385,000 that Rhino's paying. To the yeah, I agree. I, ju- I don't know why that wasn't an option. Um, this was a number of years ago. I, I, I think it was less than 1% of your, of your tax bill um, goes into that fund. If I recall. And, and I don't know if, if, this committee would have the freedom to come up with different language so that it wasn't a, an additional property tax yearly on residents, but like Mark said, something more along the lines of uh, on the sale of properties. Take, take from growth. Yeah, so. In California, they charge the developers. So, you know, you wanna develop in the town, you're gonna to contribute, you know, $25,000, $250,000, whatever, to, you know, if you want the privilege of developing, then you have to help us buy some more space. Well, that's another thing you could throw out there too, is it, it, if, it, I don't know that you'd say it would go into the fee structure of the planning board, but as part of the application fee for some sort of development, a specific fee, whether it's tiered or just a flat rate for every development would go into an open space fund. So again, to Barbara's point, I think to everybody's point, not to not burden the taxpayer with more coming out of their paycheck at the end of the week, mm-hmm. but it's, you know, paid in advance by the developer for the, from the growth. Right. We will, we will recognize the benefits in our property values if we preserve our open space. Right. Yeah. And we can't do it soon enough, I think. No, we can't. And the time is now because people are heated about what we've got going on. So right. it's, it's a good um, time. Michelle, did you have anything else? No, nope, that was it. Now, you had mentioned to me earlier in the week about uh, the conversation you heard about town uh, planner. Through oh, the board yeah. Selectman. Yes. So I, I have talked to uh, Chairman LaCamera about that, and they are seeking, and they're, they're trying to come up with a position for a town planner. They're, I think they're pretty serious about it. Uh, they've upped the requirement from part-time to full-time and increase the potential salary back to what the planning board used to always put it put in for a budget number of around 80,000. Uh, and I think if, if I recall correctly, he said that they would be writing a job description and then sending it to us uh, in early March for us to add or change, make suggestion for that job description. Cool. So I think they're pretty serious about that. That's a good thing. Yeah. Good. Um, I have one other thing. Uh, it's personal for me, uh, not, not emotionally personal. On my 296 Bedford Street project, I found a glitch in the outdoor lighting plan that the company that did the lighting layout did not account for farmer's porches on the building. And they put the lights just above them so that they would light up the copper roofs very well, but not the area below. So I've asked them to do a change. Would you guys like to see that change? Mm -hmm. 
I think as long as it's in compliance with the um, with the dark that, stuff, and I know you would be, but you know. I can tell you in short, and again, I'm happy to if I could share my screen maybe at the next meeting when I get the lighting plan. Sure. I'm just pulling a couple lights off the building and putting them on light poles on the parking lot side of the building, not the street side. That, so it'll light the parking area better rather than the rooftop. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's no additional light. It's just basically pulling them about 12 feet off the building and putting them on the same size pole that's used throughout the parking lot. And I would be uploading that document to attached to my building permit so that Nate has it as well on file. Uh, so I just, I didn't want to do something and not have updated the planning board. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll share it at a later meeting, just so you know. But I'm, I'm pretty I'm, sure there's a fee for that. <laughs> probably is. I think we just upped it today too. <laughs> hey, transparency is good. So. Thank you, Mark. Uh, so if that, is no other business. I uh, just want to make a mention our next meeting is our next regular meeting is March 11th at seven o'clock, 2021. Uh, Cause don't forget we do have a uh, 43D meeting next week, uh, March 4th, seven o'clock. Uh, and that said, uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Michelle seconded. <laughs> Uh, all in favor, Barbara? Aye. Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Jack? Aye. Myself. Motion carries unanimously. Meeting is adjourned. Everybody have a good night, and we will see you next week. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Good night.